Sea Urchin Cell Division Lab by Allie, Jilly, and Sophie. Anatomy of Sea Urchins Male and female sea urchins have the same anatomy except for male release sperm into the water through the gonads and the females release eggs. Physiology of the sea urchin. In the sea urchin anatomy, there is a mouth, an Aristotle lantern, which is the whole shape of the sea urchin, a ring canal, a stomach, an esophagus, intestines, an axial organ, a nerve ring, a radial nerve, radial canals, tube feet, spines, gonads, a test, and an anus. Urchins have tube feet, which arise from the five ambulacral grooves. Tube feet are moved by a water vascular system. This water vascular system works through hydraulic pressure. This means that urchins pump water into and out of the tube feet, letting the sea urchin move. Tube feet are also used as feeding tentacles. The Aristotle lantern is actually the whole shape of the sea urchin because it is shaped like the lamps of Aristotle's time. The spines help to protect the sea urchin. The axial or organ is a complex and elongated mass of tissue found in sea urchins. Although its functions are not yet well understood, the axial organ plays an important part in defense against invading organisms, can contract, and is responsible for the circulation of fluids. It also may have excretory and secretory activity. The radial nerve is the main part of the nervous system for sea urchins. Most sea urchins spend their time grazing on algae on rocks. They tend to have covering behavior, meaning that they try to protect themselves most of the time. They will stay under rocks or in deep corners. The sea urchin is nocturnal, hiding in crevices during the day and emerging at night to feed. Sea urchins can be found in both warm and cold water. They can also survive in salt water, but can survive in both intertidal and deep water. Sea urchins are relatively low on the food chain. They mainly eat ocean plants, dead animals, or animals unable to move, like barnacles. Some of the things they eat include barnacles, moss animals, dead fish, kelp, sea sponges, and sea lettuce. Sea urchins have many predators, however, which push them further down on the food chain. Some animals that eat sea urchins include crabs, wolf eels, seagulls, lobsters, starfish, horn sharks, and otters. Most sea urchin species have two different sexes, and they release their respective gametes into the water during breeding season in the spring. Fertilization happens in the ocean outside of the sea urchin's bodies. It is hard to tell whether what a gender a sea urchin is based on its exterior. The easiest way to tell is whether their sperm or egg is excreted. The sperm is clear and the eggs look orange. The following pictures show early development of the sea urchin cells taken from under the microscope during our lab. On the phylogenetic tree, sea urchins are classified as echinoderms. Besides sea urchins, this phylum has animals such as starfish, sand dollars, and sea cucumbers. This phylum has around 7,000 living species and is the largest group of deuterosomes. It is the biggest phylum with no freshwater or land-based species. Materials 0.5 milliliters potassium chloride solution, seawater. Two fertile urchins, a male and a female. 5 cc syringe with number 25G needle. One plastic pipette. One microcentrifuge tube to store the sperm. Two sterile dishes. One sterile beaker one microscope and one scope cam setup, one video camera or cell phone to record. Procedure. Record all of the following experiment on a video camera or cell phone. Pick up the sea urchin while wearing gloves. Handle them gently. 
Hold your urchin while the instructor injects 0.1 to 0.2 milliliters per inch, a total of two injections. Gently shake the sea urchin for a few seconds to mix the KCL solution into the urchin. Be careful not to shake too hard or the urchin can be killed. Place the mouth of the male sea urchin down on a sterile dish, which should not have any water on it. Wait for about one minute until the white sperm appear on the surface of the sea urchin. Collect the sperm with a pipette and place it into a small cuvette. Keep them concentrated just until you need them. The tube of sperm can be refrigerated for up to five days, and any eggs not immediately used can be placed in a sterile beaker with salt water. After the instructor injects the female sea urchin, place its mouth side up on a beaker full of seawater. The beaker should be slightly smaller than the diameter of the urchin. The eggs can then be collected at the bottom of the, sea be of the beaker. This can take 10 to 30 minutes to finish shedding. Place the sperm and eggs in a petri dish and place under a microscope. Begin to take pictures and videos of the cell division. Make sure the petri dish is not kept under the light of the microscope for more than a few minutes. Carefully treat the sea urchins as instructed to keep the cells alive for as long as possible. Record measurements of how large the cell is and collect qualitative data of sea urchin cells. Clean up all materials and finish recording data. This video shows a close-up footage of the injection of potassium chloride solution into the sea urchin. Be sure to replenish the water in the petri dish so that the cells do not dry out and die. The following videos show our group conducting the experiment. Here, measurements are being taken of the cells from under the microscope camera. Here, the growth of the sea urchins is being observed and data has been collected. How do strong water currents affect the process of fertilization in the wild? Sea urchins simply release their sperm and eggs into the ocean and are pushed together by the water currents. However, water currents in the ocean are much more powerful than any sperm will be. Strong water currents can separate as well as bring together sperm and egg. Because not all eggs are fertilized, many more are produced than actually used. The process of fertilization. There is no exact amount of sperm and egg that must be used for this experiment. In the lab, once the urchins have dropped their gametes, all that must be done is to take a pipette and get a little bit of each to put in a petri dish. When egg and sperm cells are separate, they do not grow or reproduce. They go, through, they go through a little metabolism, but not much. When an egg and sperm meet, they fuse and more cells start to grow. This is called egg activation. An acrosome is the shell-like covering on the head of a sperm cell. The acrosome reaction is something that must take place in order for the cells to fuse. When the sperm approaches the egg, the membrane around the acrosome fuses to the cell membrane. This allows the parts of the acrosome to get to the cell. The acrosome basically softens the cell membrane so the sperm and egg can fuse. This picture shows sea urchin cells 
shortly after fertilization. There are about 23,300 genes in the sea urchin. Background on the cell cycle. G1 is growth phase one. Cells enlarge and make new proteins, RNA, and other macromolecules and prepare for the S phase. The S phase is synthesis. The DNA of each chromosome replica replicates to form a new identical set of chromosomes. In G2, which is growth phase two, the cells prepare for mitosis and to divide. Mitosis is the process that distributes each, a copy of each chromosome to each new cell during cell division. Cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm of a cell after nuclear division. Regulation of the various stages. Signals either inside or outside of the cell. Uh, signals inside such as promoting factors that promote cell division or enzymes that turn on or off based on the need. External signals can be chemical or physical and can be released by cells to tell them to divide or not. The cell cycle is also regulated by checkpoints, which tell cells whether or not to continue after a certain point. Checkpoints are signals that regulate the cell cycle. The three main points are G1, G2, and M. The restriction point is at G1. It is the most important point. If a cell gets the go-ahead, it continues in the, in the cycle. If it does not get the go-ahead, it goes to the geo. What can cause problems? Cancer cells do not listen to normal signals that regulate the cell cycle. They divide excessively and invade other tissues. Early development of the sea urchin embryos. Cleavage, the division of the cells in early embryo. Radial holoblastic cleavage has the characteristics of the deuterosomes, which include some vertebrae and echinoderms, in which the spindle axes are parallel or at right angles to the polar axis of the oikite. Blastula and blastocoel. The blastula of the sea urchin is a hollow ball left of the embryo after the cleavage stage. The blastosol is the cavity on the inside of the blastula, and the blastoderm is a sheet of cells on the outside. What could happen if one cell was removed or damaged at the 2-cell, 4-cell, or 8-cell stage? The growth rate of the embryo would be slowed down, but it would not harm the embryo. The steps would continue to proceed even if one cell is removed or damaged. The following nine pictures were taken during the first eight hours after fertilization of the sperm and egg of the sea urchin from this lab. Several of the following images contain measurements taken of the radius in micrometers of the cells during the first eight hours after fertilization. The following video is a sped up version of during the first hour of fertilization of the sea urchin cells. Late development of the sea urchin cells. Gastrulation. During gastrulation, the organism changes from a singular circular cell to a multilayered organism. During this process, many of the cells move from the external to an internal location. Endoderm, also called endoblast, is the most interior germ layer in an organism and makes up the gut area and other internal organs. Mesoderm is the middle layer of cells that makes up the muscles, the skeletal system, and the circulatory system. Ectoderm, the most exterior germ layer, forms skin, brain, the nervous system, and other external tissues. The following nine pictures were taken after 29 to 30 hours after fertilization.
following videos were also taken after 29 to 30 hours of fibrillization, and euglena can be shown in detail. Organogenesis Deuterosome development In animals, a developmental mode distinguished by the development of the animus, anus from the blastopore, often also characterized by the enteros enterosolus development of the body cavity by the radial cleavage. Uh, that's from greatpacificmedia.com. This forms the main shape of the sea urchin. The term deuterosome means mouth second because in this process the mouth is formed after the anus is formed. In the early stages of development, the embryo de develops a pucker in, cell, in the cell forms and on the edge of the pucker of the anus develops. The mouth is formed la later, hence the meaning mouth later. The following videos show animation of cell division.